What looked like an impossible feat has led to the eventual impeachment of the embattled Deputy Governor of Edo State, Philip Shaibu. The impeachment, which happened immediately after members of the Edo Assembly adopted the report of a seven-man investigative panel that was set up by Daniel Lukumbo, our Chief Judge of Edo State, was headed by S.A. Omanua, a retired justice, following the allegations of misconduct, perjury, and disclosure of government secrets, has seen the former Deputy Governor reject his impeachment by the State House of Assembly. For the Governor, Godwin Obaseki immediately picked 38-year-old Omobayo um, Godwins as his deputy. Now, Godwins was sworn in as the number two citizen of Edo State. For many, they saw this coming. For some, it was an abuse of the judicial system. Well, joining us to discuss this further, we do have um, uh, two gentlemen who will be joining us in the course of this discussion. But of course, uh, we'll be expecting to be joined by Barrister Monde Ubani, legal practitioner in Lagos, and of course, Honorable Andrew um, Adeze and Wanta, President, African Public Interest Lawyers Union. But right now we do have Andrew who's joining us. So um, thank you so much for being here, Mr. and Wanta. Yeah, good morning. Good thank morning. you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's no surprise that um, this actually happened yesterday. Uh, we do recall that there has been a build-up conversation uh, before this took place, especially here on Breakfast Central. I do recall where you joined as well as... Um, uh, another uh, legal practitioner and our conversation was bordering on the fact that uh, there was a uh, uh, the primaries were taking place and what was happening in one uh, point it was also taking place at another but then again let me get your reactions first to uh, the impeachment of the former now former uh, Edo State Deputy Governor yeah thank you for that question I will start by saying that yesterday was a very sad day in the history of our democracy. It was a sad day for rule of law, and it was indeed a sad day for due process. We are not surprised because uh, this was the same governor who prevented 14 lawmakers from sitting. And uh, unfortunately, we were part of that government at the time. Even the president, the deputy governor who was illegally impeached yesterday was also part of that government. None of us resigned. So what is happening, I will not want to say it is not unconnected with Kama. And Obaseki, being the present governor of Edo State, has a four-year term, which will terminate on the 12th of November, 2024. We are talking of Godin Emefele today, who is undergoing trial. Another Godwin, of course, we face the law come November 12, 2024. Obviously, what the governor is doing is a drama written by him, orchestrated by him, and delivered by him. A situation where last year he denied that he was not planning to impeach the deputy governor. And because the deputy governor was in court, we drew that matter. It is the reasons that he went to court that is being used as a basis for his, his illegal impeachment. I use the word illegal advisedly because the matter is in court. We were all in court yesterday morning. Obasaki sent five senior advocates, including Oluwale Yamuese, his former, or rather his immediate past attorney general. The matter, of course, was adjourned to Thursday after the salary break, only for us to hear that, oh, they are doing impeachment in Benin. The panel that was set up TV of those members, and including the chairman making for, are parties to that case. There was an order for them to come and show cause. They were sent with a copy of that order because we knew they would not acknowledge service. A senior advocate from our team went to the panel and informed them of a court order. But yet, they went ahead in the kangaroo fashion. A period of three months was stated in the appointment letter within which these issues should be investigated. In less than 48 hours, in a kangaroo fashion, they said they came up with a report. And you know, the House of Assembly is a rubber stamp of the governor. And as usual, and true to type, the, the rubber stamp did what can best be described as an alawada dance. Shaibu, on record, was not given a copy of that equipment notice. After doing a cat and mouse game, they said they published it in the Nigerian, Obse uh, Nigerian Observer. And unfortunately, Section 188 sub to makes it mandatory that the Shaibu must be served with a copy of that impeachment notice. But that was not done. And that's why we went to court. As I earlier noted, four of those members 
We wanted them to, you know, um, recuse themselves because the Constitution is very clear. Section 26 talks about if you have a panel, you have the right to be informed of the offense, and members of that panel must be independent and impartial. And now, uh, the, the chairman is from Edo Central. He's one of the advocates that power must shift to Edo Central, and is opposed to the aspiration of the tribal. One of the members, a professor of law in the uh, in Besinidasa University, is an appointee of Obaseki. Another was previously appointed into the NSAS committee. His name is President Agbukan. And one of them, the wife, is a strong supporter, strong PDP member, who Obaseki recently appointed chairman of the Welfare Committee of the Factional Primaries, in which Philip Shaibu, you know, contested. So for us, we don't think people like this should be in the panel as, in, as important as that. The constitution is very clear. Section 180 is clear that these people should be people of integrity. They should not be, you know, those in the public, you know, service, not appointees of the governor. But all these were violated. Why are they afraid of uh, the judiciary? The matter was in court, or rather a matter is in court. The court had done to Thursday. You have a three months period. So why the haste? Okay, look at the person that was appointed by the governor. Under section 199, sub 3C, that young man was supposed to go before the House of Assembly and declared, I received the approval of the House of Assembly. But the governor did not do that. As early as 8 a.m., they were already at the festival hall, even before the House of Assembly started sitting. The moment they heard that the deputy governor was impeached, the governor started serving in the other man without following the provisions of the Constitution. So you ask me this question Is Obaseki not lawless? Hmm. So there's a the, the, the answer is very lawless, and he will pay for all these things. It's you know these infractions against democracy, against the constitution. And let me tell you, people like Emir Fele, when they were a CBA governor, they violated laws, but today are they not paying for it? And I assure you, come November 12th, Obasaki will lose his immunity, and he's going to face the full rot of the law. Why do you say he will lose his humility? What do you mean? His tenure will end. He's either under his oh, immunity oh. now to commit all kinds of uh, illegalities. He's perpetrating the highest level of the secretion of the constitution. Oh. Look at the entire process, a complete charade. I know why I'm even worried is that Edo is always in the news for the bad reasons. You see how throughout last year, the man didn't do anything. It was impeachment. My question is, is impeachment an achievement of the government? I can tell you that over one billion of Edo taxpayers' money has gone into this impeachment. And that is what we want the EFCC to investigate. The House of Assembly members, the chief judge, members of that panel, did they do these things for free? Did they violate the law for free? I mean, these are foods for thought, which I think the EFCC, the ICPC, and the Code of Conduct should please take note of. And I will call on Mr. President, the way the governor has decided to desecrate the Constitution, the president must intervene. He's the father of the nation. When we had a similar situation of reverse, he didn't mind that the, PD, the person there was a PTP governor. He intervened. A situation where a man takes laws into his hands. A man, a deputy governor, him on the 20th, he forcibly took him out from office last year. Now, he has ceremonially infected what he started since last year, and nobody's saying anything. Mr. We are Walter. destroying democracy. Mr. What Walter. happened yesterday can be likened to a coup d'etat. Don't huh? be there. I want to follow up on something you said. I had another question in mind, but I'll ask that later. You said the president should intervene, just similar to what happened in River State. Even on, up till today... The president, I said. Yes, you said the president should intervene. Even up till today, there are many who criticize the intervention of the president because they say that what that has done is showing that the president is superior to the constitution because there was a provision for how that should be handled by law. If some people uh, resign from a political party, that seat is automatically declared vacant, and there's a constitutional provision for how that should be done. For the president's intervention, um, intervention coming and saying, you know, let's revert to status quo, was in a way showing that he was superior to the constitution. Do you agree with that position? And what sort of intervention would you have, uh, would you have wanted you know, to see on the part of the president here in Edo State? You know, every case is decided on its merits. The decision they reached in Rivers was by agreement, and uh, part of it was that some matters in court should, should be withdrawn. I don't think Mr. President would have, would have advised that they violated provisions of the Constitution. And you've heard the government of Rivers State say severely that they are ready to succumb, you know, to whatever arrangements they have, no matter how uh, painful, you know, same may be. But we know we have a very stubborn government. We don't expect him to yield to Mr. President's intervention. But when I say intervention, I mean by ensuring that law and order is obeyed. The present person who was appointed, 
There's no way you can become deputy governor without following the rules of the constitution. Right. Well, we seem to have a network challenges again uh, concerning this conversation. But this is really, this is really, really a conversation we want to we want to look at. Um, our guest uh, has indeed uh, brought out some very salient points. But if you can hear me, Mr. Nwanta, uh, go ahead with your with your your, your points here. No, I'm saying that there's a procedure to occupy the public office, even the office of governor. There's a procedure for election into that office. And that is why I said Section 191, sub 3C, also gives a provision in the event of a casual vacancy of the office of the governor, how that office can be occupied. You don't put the cart before the horse. So why the haste? Why was this man not sent to the House of Assembly? Because they know that by Thursday, the courts will make a pronouncement. So to force a fate and company on the courts, they hurriedly swore him in, simultaneously with the purported impeachment of Shaibo. My worry is that democracy is being put on his head, it's being stood on his head. My worry is that the governor has violated very important provisions of the constitution on succession of power, because this is what we call a coup d'etat. When you occupy public office and elected public office through an democratic means, what is that? Obviously, it violates the provisions of section one sub two that prescribes the method for which power can be taken, and that any method other than that is illegal, is unconstitutional. So, what the governor has done is a civilian coup d'etat, hmm. the matter in court. And it was his uncle, Obaseki, or, or Andrew, Andrews Obaseki GSC, in the case of Ujuku versus Governor of Lagos State, that said the executive lawlessness is tantamount to a deliberate violation of the constitution. So, Obaseki has started his own dictatorship on a pedestal of executive lawlessness and he must be called to order. He's not the owner of a dope state. He's not the god of a dope politics. He has every right to play politics of capitalism, which is playing now. The reason why they are doing all these things is to bring in somebody they can use for the election from a couple because a young man said it yesterday on the TV program that the reason why they brought him on board is for him to help them get votes in a couple do. So a dope state has now returned to a place where the government you know, picks and chooses. And that's very unfortunate. It's dangerous to democracy. It's dangerous to the sustenance of the rule of law. And there's no way this can be allowed to pass. The matter is in court. And we expect that the judiciary will rise to the occasion. All right. To stop uh, this act of illegality. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring in uh, Barista Monde Ubani. He's a legal practitioner here in Lagos. And uh, he'll be joining us as well. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ubani. Uh, what are your thoughts regarding this? There are several... Uh, Perspectives that have been discussed this morning are all the guests. Honorable Enwanta has shared his perspective regarding the impeachment of the Deputy Governor of Edo State. What's your position on that? Legal, illegal, or what, what stand are you taking? Uh, uh, th thank you very much. You know, uh, I just joined. I'm, I'm very sorry about uh, uh, joining a bit late. You know, so I may not have uh, heard the perspectives of my colleagues. Uh, but as you have asked me, I have my own perspective concerning what happened uh, in Edo, what is playing out presently in Edo. It's rather unfortunate. And uh, I need, we need, need also to blame uh, partly uh, the constitutional provision that is not clearly explicit with regards to what amounts uh, to gross misconduct. Uh, because uh, gross misconduct is whatever the House uh, term it to be, it's not properly defined. Uh, and it has been used over time by the members of the Legislative Assembly to do all manner of things. Uh, the moment uh, the Deputy Governor uh, brought himself out, saying that he's going to contest uh, the position of governorship in a Edo state, uh, contrary to the desire of his boss, I knew that the man was in trouble. He's going to be in trouble. Uh, and also wanted to contest that election under the same platform uh, that the that the boss you know came into power with, and that is the, the PDP. He didn't even seek to go to another political party. He wanted to contest that the gubernatorial election under PDP, and his boss has actually clearly indicated that he has a choice, and that the candidate is not the deputy governor. So he went and participated, and even declared himself a winner. And so the governor now resorted to using the members of the house in order to uh, to remove it, which is what he has done. I commented in this particular television that the moment the house 
has started the process of uh, impeachment, that the man is gone. The only thing is that he may have a remedy in court, but that is thereafter. If they would have completed the entire process, they will remove him from office, will have access to the office again, they will stop paying his salaries and duties and, I mean, whatever he's entitled to. And in this case, we go as far as going to Supreme Court, which may have, which may take up to 15 years or thereabout, before it is clearly resolved, after which the man would have, you know, completed his tenure and all that, you know. So it's clearly an unfortunate incident. And the only sin he has committed, and they know it, even the so-called misconduct, is because he contested the primaries, contrary to the desire of his boss. That's all. But they have found whatever, they have come up with all manner of allegation and levied it on his head, and now they have uh, sent him packing. It's rather unfortunate. It's a system. It's a systemic thing. In Nigerian politics, the moment you are a deputy, or the moment you are appointed, what they expect from you is 120% loyalty. 120%, not 100%, even more than 100%. The moment you show any act of disloyalty, the system works against you. And it has, been, it has happened in several instances, and it's, uh, it's quite unfortunate. You know, it's only a few instances that deputy governors have actually succeeded in uh, going contrary to the wish of their boss. I remember Omahi. Omahi went out against his... Uh, the boss, his boss wish, and eventually emerged as governor. The same thing with Aquavio. Aquavio was the only commissioner even. He went against the, the desire of his boss and emerged as a governor. But so for you to go against your boss in any gubernatorial election, he must be well loaded. He must be well connected. He must be very, very strong. He must be a man of timber and caliber. You he he destroy the system. It's a systemic, you have to destroy the entire system. But unfortunately, Shuabu could not pull through. And look at the consequences now. It's gone. But the remedy in court may come later, after which uh, somebody may regard it as academic exercise. An unfortunate thing. It has happened. It has happened. Okay, I just want to follow up from that question. So it would seem that you and Mr. Iwanta are on the similar side of the divide. Do you trust the judiciary to be able to resolve this matter in favor, maybe in favor of Philip Shaibu? And I'm asking this because earlier in the conversation, Mr. Iwanta had said that it's time for Mr. President to intervene to ensure that you know the right thing is done. So are we, can we trust that the judiciary will do what needs to be done? And do you think that this will go in his favor, maybe? Okay, I know that's sort of preempting the, the court, but like, yeah, do we I, trust I, the judiciary? There are decided, there, yeah, there are decided cases. Uh, I think the judiciary was, uh, they sought the intervention of the judicial system uh, in Abuja and the court, even though they did not make any express pronouncement as to granting interim injunction, said, look, uh, I will want the State House of Assembly and all that who were sued to come and explain uh, why that particular relief they were seeking for will not be granted. In other words, the matter was least pending. It was already a matter in court uh, before the impeachment process took place. So now, before the court could hear all the parties in the matter, they have already gone ahead to impeach. So I think at the end, with all the decided authorities and all that, if the court discovers there is a breach in the procedure, what the law says is that the judiciary should not intervene whenever the House, you know, has taken any part or any proceeding in terms of uh, impeachment. The court's power is clearly ousted. But wherever the court discovers that in, in the impeachment process, that the House has not followed st strictly the provisions of the constitution especially all the procedural you know uh, outline in the constitution if they don't follow it the court have always come up with a decision in favor of the impeached and we have several decided cases so it's only when the court discovered that the procedure was not complied with then the court will actually grant uh, a remedy in favor it has happened there are already decided cases of the supreme court level so i am very hopeful that if the man can be able to uh, prove that there was a breach in the process of this impeachment uh, proceeding, then the court will grant remedy. But if there is none, and they have complied strictly with all the provisions as outlined in the Constitution with regards to impeachment proceedings, then the court will actually say, look, well, my powers with regard to that is clearly ousted. So that, that is what I think will happen. Uh, let them uh, put all their facts together, put all the evidences together, in order to convince the court that there is procedural irregularity, it's only in that circumstance that the court can come to their rescue. Uh, that is my opinion about the uh, judicial intervention. All right. Um, 
the Honorable Emanta, I mean, there was a court notice that was served um, and you also talked about it. Um, I think we should have it on the screen as well. Um, my question to you simply is this. I mean, there's a notice to obtain a complaint form uh, to file a formal complaint against Honorable Justice Daniel uh, Okumboa, uh, the Chief Judge of the Edo State, for abuse of office, official misconduct and desecrating his oath of office. Uh, putting all of this together, uh, do, you, do, you, do you see any positivity or any positive light at the end of the tunnel, especially looking at what has taken place? And you also made mention that uh, the provision, of course, like you mentioned, makes uh, uh, room uh, before another deputy governor is appointed. He must have gone to the House of Assembly, but we did not see that yesterday. So are you also saying, I'm asking two questions, please take note. The first one, um, are there any hopes that um, your notice being served to the Apex Court will, will yield? Secondly, um, the current um, um, Deputy Governor, Godwins, are you saying that his appointment is illegal? Is the question directed to me? No, no let, let me listen to Honorable uh, M. Wanta. I'll come back to you. Um, very yeah, thank you. I'm not just saying that the appointment is illegal, but it's also unconstitutional. I want to... Uh, uh, Okay, we seem to have a little connectivity challenge there with uh, Honourable Mwanta. Okay, let's, let's, let's just see if we can get him back so he could give us uh, an answer or answers to these questions. That is what uh, my oh. colleague had said. Go on. Go ahead, please. Can I continue? Go ahead. Yes, go please. Ahead. I said just to align with what my uh, learned colleague had said, Mr. Obani, once the court establishes that there are procedural irregularities, certainly the court will intervene. Certainly the court will intervene. And as I as... Mm, okay. From all the things they've done so far, compliance was not done at all. First, the way and manner the deputy governor was impeached, he was given notice, as I earlier mentioned, of the impeachment um, allegations. Secondly, five four members of that panel, we told them to recuse themselves so the action will fight. And of course, an order was obtained for them to show cause and they refused to obey that order they refused to obey that order the chief judge was served a copy of that order he went ahead to inaugurate the panel the panel sat even after they were served with that court order for them to come and show cause on monday and were in court yesterday they are told from attorney general of the state and four of as the case were sent by the governor the matter was adjourned to thursday only for us to hear about two hours later that they have impeached the deputy governor. The panel had three clear months to do their work. So why the haste? Talking about the appointment of the other person that was uh, made deputy governor yesterday, the House of Assembly must give approval under Section 191 sub 3 c But that was not followed. So when you come into a government position as important as that of the deputy governor to the back door, is that not an illegal act? Of course, the courts will declare these things as illegal. In the days ahead, I assure Nigerians, it does not matter how long it takes to get justice. Though the wind of the wheels of justice may grow slowly, but it's sure. And also to state clearly that for the chief judge who participated in this thing, it's not above the law. The National Judicial Council is not there for nothing. When a judicial officer misconducts himself or misdemeans himself, a petition will be formally written, which we have done already. And this is uh, Daniel Okumboa, the chief judge of the district. We want to explain why he should remain as chief judge because he has started acting politically. Everything the chief judge did was not act, he didn't act judicially, but he acted politically. This is a chief judge that swore in that man yesterday. Did the Alpha Assembly clear him? As chief judge of the state, before he became a substantive chief judge, was it not clear that the Alpha Assembly? Did he ask questions? Must a man behave like a zombie? As a chief judge, he's supposed to be the person in charge of the judiciary. It's just that we say that John General is the chief law officer of the state. The chief judge is the chief law officer of the state so in the instance of the world. He must ensure compliance with the law. The duty of the judiciary is to insist that the constitution should be obeyed. So, do you, so it's so, quite unfortunate that the chief judge has now associated himself with the executive, now has subjugated the judiciary of Edo State to the governor of Edo State. Eight judges have not been sworn in. This man is very comfortable as chief judge. He has not been able to question why the governor has refused to swear in eight judges who have been cleared by the National Judicial Council. And we're going to include in our petition that the chief judge of a dossier should be investigated for that, for complicity.
Hmm. All right. Uh, so I think uh, the final question would be for both of you, for Mr. Nwanta and Mr. Albani. What's the future for uh, Philip Schreiber and how do you think this will impact his political career? I'll start with Mr. Nwanta and then we'll head to Mr. Albani. Mr. Nwanta, are you there? Okay, I'm here. Yes, please go ahead. So I think uh, because the matter is in courts, we will just leave it there. Because uh, as I earlier noted, just the way the governor's uncle, Andrew Sototo Obaseke once said, he said, executive lawlessness is a deliberate violation, is tantamount to a deliberate violation of the Constitution. And remember to put out GSC, talked about this idea of executive lawlessness in the case of Obaseke, sorry, in the case of Ujuku, and governor of Lagos State. Remember in that case, Ojuku in that case was the person whose house, the Alaska Lodge in Lagos, was ransacked. The matter was in court. Okay. In between the time the matter traveled from the High Court to the Court of Appeal, the governor, the military governor of the State took of the Lagos State took laws into his hands. And of course, the Supreme Court condemned it. And the facts of that case are not very different from this one. A court order was given, but the panel went ahead against that court order. Having been said, the chief judge was complicit because he participated in the entire process after having served the copy of that court order. The House of Assembly, of course, was in part in that case. They said they went ahead to impeach the deputy governor. But we live in a constitutional democracy, and the matter is in court. So we know the court will intervene, because the matter is already before them. And the rule of law will be restored, or Basaki's act of illegality will be declared so. And at the end of the day, Shaibu's rights as deputy governor of the district, elected deputy governor of the district, will be fully restored. <laughs> All right. Um, we've run out of time. Mr. Albani, please, as quickly as possible, maybe in 30 seconds, how do you think this would affect him if the court rules in his favor and if the court rules against him? Uh, the, the point is that we have, you know, as my colleague has rightly pointed out, uh, the matter is subjudice. Uh, we expect the judiciary to intervene. Uh, but my only problem with the judicial intervention is that before the judiciary will resolve the matter, uh, going from the lower court to the Supreme Court, the, the tenure of uh, Baseki would have ended. The tenure of the the new deputy governor would have ended. So whatever victory he will uh, he will obtain uh, would be known as uh, a direct victory. Uh, may not necessarily, you know, put him back as a deputy governor. Uh, it, on record, he would be regarded as deputy governor, but he wouldn't occupy that position because the tenure would have elapsed. You know, so that's the only problem we may have. But as for getting justice, you know, we have absolute faith in our judicial sector that at the end, whatever error, whatever error must have been committed against any of the parties will certainly be redressed. You know, as for the political career of any person, it is the people that determines the political career of any person. I don't know what Shuabu will be uh, later. I don't know what the new deputy governor's career will be. It's clearly in the hand of the Almighty and also in the hand of the Edo people who eventually will uh, begin to make choices you know, even as we progress as a nation. Uh, so that's all I can say concerning that. Thank you so much, um, Barrister Monde Ubani, a legal practitioner, and also Honorable Andrew Adeze Nwanta for joining us in this conversation. Uh, please, gentlemen, do keep your phone lines open. We look forward to continuing this conversation, of course, uh, looking what the court would say, especially on Thursday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.